Hey guy from New Plastic and today we'll texture and light up the fellow stag kettle we made in Redshift. Check out the previous videos where we modeled and UV unwrapped it and textured it in Octane if you're interested in that. Also you can buy this model on the New Plastic Gumroad. It comes in all sorts of beautiful colors and two different versions of the kettle style. Very affordable, great way to support the channel. Or check out the prints and pins I made on the Pink High Gumroad. And consider supporting on Patreon or membership where you can watch these videos with no ads get access to these project files, get free products from the store, and all sorts of cool perks, but mostly help me make more and better content for y'all. Follow me on Instagram at ojang or the channel at brand new plastic. Join our Discord, subscribe, listen to Misfits. Let's go. Okay, so we got our model here. Let's add a quick HDRI and an area light just so we can see how the textures react to the light. We'll keep it very basic for now. Let's also add a backdrop and let's start creating the main material. Let's choose some kind of a nice creamy albedo color this time. Add a Maxon noise, solo it, and let's select displaced Voronoi, up the octave slightly. I just want to get this fine and irregular circular noise for the bump. So first let's scale it way down, flip the low and high clip to invert it. And let's plug it to the bump channel using a bump map node. Way too strong. Let's down the height to 0.001, maybe 0.002. That's fine. Let's connect the same noise to the reflection channel using a ramp node and make the blacks a light gray. So we're just slightly reducing the specularity in the bump crevices. Very subtle, but it's good. And let's add another noise, change to FBM, scale it way up and plug into the roughness channel, change the black and white values to something like middle gray and light gray. We just want to break up the roughness very lightly, maybe make the middle gray darker. Yeah, we're starting to get some breakage, but we don't want to overdo it since this is a product shot. We still want to keep it clean. Cool. Call this main texture and let's duplicate it and create a semi-gloss texture. I'll be using polygon selections to texture different parts of the model. So let's hit UB to select this poly ring here. Shift select this one and this one. Then UF and shift select everything in between these selections and drag the main texture onto the selection so Cinema automatically creates a selection tag with this material assigned to it. Hit UI to invert selection and UF to deselect this inside part, the inside of the spout and this charger port at the bottom. And let's drag the semi-gloss material onto this selection. Mm, okay, we can probably remove the bump. Let's add a color correction to this roughness noise and we can make it darker to gloss it up. I'm a bit too glossy. Yeah, this is fine. Okay, let's select the inside of the body and the spout. And I actually pasted in three procedural metal materials from my procedural metal pack, which you can find on my Gumroad. You can also watch my Redshift realistic metal tutorial to learn how to create them. So I'll duplicate this aluminum one, call it aluminum body and drag it onto the selection. Okay, let's edit this material. Hmm, okay. Bump height is way too strong, so let's bring it way down. Let's choke the blacks on the bump noise. And maybe even less height. Okay, that's it for now, we'll get back to this. Let's take care of the charger port at the bottom. Mm, let's rotate the model so it catches the light better. Okay, select all this, drag the copper material onto it. And same here, bump is way too strong. Let's bring it down, choke the blacks. Much better. Let's make the roughness slightly brighter. Let's also make the gradient bright notch more bright, so increase the contrast. Yeah, this looks fine. Okay, let's rotate it back and let's take care of the lid. Okay, it looks like the gasket ran away. Let's bring it back.
Maybe it needs to be scaled up a bit, huh? Okay, let's make a selection for the metal part. So this ring, this ring, and this whole thing. And let's drop the second aluminum material onto it. I'll control drag the other aluminum material and drop it on this one since we had to fix some stuff in it. Let's also invert selection and drop the main texture onto it. Okay, wow, this looks awful. First, first let's really choke the blacks on the bump noise. There's way too many bumps. I think we need a different noise, maybe Zada. Okay, yeah, this looks more scratchy. Oh, what? The bump height jumped way too high. I think I accidentally entered some high number here. Bring it down to 0 0.001. Okay, maybe 0 0.0001. Let's also change the other aluminum bump. Okay, let's increase the roughness a bit. So unfortunately, I couldn't find a way to add procedural radial scratches for the radial brushed metal look. So we'll have to create an image of it and add it as an image texture. So first, let's export the UV map as an image file. I'll add a bake material tag, disable the subdivision surface, very important. Choose a name for the file, change resolution to 4K, check UV map in the options tab. If we preview it, looks like we're getting the UV island, so let's hit bake. And I also did it with the body model, though the UV bay kept failing and looking back, I think it was because the body model was hidden, but I just copied the model to a new project and baked it and it worked fine. Let's open the lid UV map in Photoshop. So these parts are not metal as well as the two bars at the bottom. The rest are the metal parts. So let's add a layer with noise and apply a radial blur to it. Make sure quality is best. And I'm using around 10 amount and maybe make a round selection at the center and apply blur again. <laughs> not much different, but this is great. Let's scale this whole thing down and place it right in the center of this circle island and mask it. Great, for the rest, we'll need a directional noise. So let's add a new layer with noise and apply a motion blur to it. And we should make the noise more tight. So let's squash it vertically and then duplicate it and merge it all. Okay, lastly, let's group it all and mask out the islands that are not metal and we can paint them white. Cool, let's save. We should also change the color mode to grayscale. Okay, let's do the same for the body map. I'll copy the layers from the lid, move the radial noise to this island here, which is the bottom of the inside part. And also on this part here. And the rest should just be directional noise, even though here the noise is going the wrong way. So I had to rotate it 90 degrees. And also I forgot to remove the noise from the non-metal islands. Okay, let's add the lid bump image to here and mix it with the bump noise using a multiply node. Okay, so we have this radial noise and it seems a bit weak. Let's increase the bump height, but make the blacks on the bump noise brighter. So we essentially make this noise weaker. Yeah, even something like this is just subtle enough. Looks good. Now let's go back to Photoshop and create the anisotropy map. Let's double click on the radial noise layer and add a gradient overlay. And you can play with the gradient notches to build the anisotropy distribution you want. I made it something like this butterfly gradient and all the rest just make them white. Save it as a different file and do the same for the body map. Let's add the anisotropy map here and plug it into the rotation channel and up the anisotropy to 0.9. Okay, the effect is pretty weak. Mm, let's try decreasing the roughness. Okay, yeah, I mean, this looks much stronger. It doesn't move like real anisotropy does, but honestly, I've yet to see a really perfectly realistic anisotropic reflection in 3D. Maybe Blender or Arnold has it. I don't know. It is what it is. Let's move on. We have a little UV seam thing going on here, but you know what? The gasket will hide it. So let's texture the gasket. Create a new material, make it black, add a noise to the roughness, up the octaves, 
change the FBM, up the low clip. And let's make the values like darker and lighter tones of a middle gray. Yeah, this looks fine. Duplicate the noise, plug it to the bump channel, bring the height down. And let's stretch it down on the Y axis. Yeah, choke the high and low clips a lot. Yeah, let's bring height down even more. Mm, yeah. Yeah, this looks good. Hmm. Actually, let's add another noise here and plug it into the color one of this first noise. So we're replacing the blacks with this new noise, kind of adding more variation to the existing bump height. Let's do FBM and it's very subtle, so it's hard to see. Let's up the low clip a bit. Yeah, just a little more subtle variation. Okay, mm, let's take another look at the metal material on the lid. can maybe scale up the roughness noise a bit it's really tiny and maybe plug it into the bump noise color one as well maybe scale it up a bit more and choke it very subtle let's add a ramp to it and lighten up the blacks so we're making the scratches lighter Yeah, even more. These scratches really want to stick out, but I want them to be barely there. That's better. Maybe up the brightness on the bump noise a bit. Up the octaves and lacunarity. Yeah, that's fine. Let's keep going. So I pasted in this procedural wood material I made. I'll dedicate a video specifically for procedural wood and redshift. I didn't want to do it here because it would have taken too long. You can also just get any PBR wood material you like and use it here. I'm going for a walnut look. And goddamn, it looks good if I do say so myself. Fully procedural. And not using the wood OSL. I'm pretty proud of it. I promise I'll make a video about it. Anyway, here I'm like, why is the body all gray? And then I realized there's a gray material covering all of it. So let's slap the wood material on the handle as well. Let's duplicate the semi-gloss material and create a glossy material for that base of the handle. Let's darken the roughness channel. Scale down the roughness noise. We can darken it a bit more. Remove the noise from the reflection channel. And uh, it's kind of hard to see how sharp the reflection is. Maybe darken it a bit more. Yeah, I think it's fine. We'll dial it in more later if we need to once we add more lights in. Let's add the semi-gloss material to the buttons. Let's do the glass now. Let's duplicate the semi-gloss material. And uh, okay, let's turn on transmission. Maybe give it a little bit of color, eh, barely. Let's darken the roughness to make it shinier. Remove the reflection noise. And let's really choke the low clip. Yeah, this might even be a bit too dirty looking, but I like it. Mm, what if we add a subsurface scattering? Give it some color. Mm, is the transmission even on now? Maybe at a very small scale. Yeah, I think I like this better. It feels a bit more diffused. Okay, let's add the copper onto the charger metal piece and add the iron material to the screw. Probably need some editing, so let's... Uh, let's bring down the bump height. And actually, let's scale up the bump noise, so it's adding more of a wobble than scuff. Now we can bring the height back up a bit. Scale up the roughness noise. Let's invert this noise and choke the whites, so they almost fake these tiny scratches instead of using the bump channel for it. Maybe we'll use the ramp node to make the scuffy parts brighter. Yeah, that's too much, but yeah, that's good. Drag this material onto the other screws as well. Add the semi-gloss to the legs. 
And yeah, I think we're done texturing. Let's light it up and make it beautiful. I'll add a camera, focal length kind of high at 100. It's mostly preferable for product shots because you get less camera distortion. Let's turn off the HDRI for now so we can see better what we're doing. And let's add an area light, target it onto the model. And let's place it around here. Bring the intensity way down. Let's also turn off the other area light. Yeah, drag it up into an angle. Okay, let's make the scene slightly different from the Octane version. So I'll add a cube, place it under the model and duplicate it and scale it up for a background. We can turn off the backdrop now. Okay, name this key light and let's bring back the other area light for our rim light. Scale it down. Bring it around here. And this time I want to capture it from this angle. So I'm not looking at it dead straight. Let's push the background back a bit further so it doesn't catch all these lights. And let's bring in some materials from Bridge. But before I do that, I need to go to the Redshift Preferences and turn off Node Materials for Presets. That's the only way Bridge will import Redshift Materials. It's the same material, it's just using the older Node system. Okay, in Bridge, I like this rough marble texture. And uh, let's do this crema marble one. Let's put the crema on the background and the rough marble on the stand. And we need to add a redshift tag and enable displacement and tessellation. And now it's way too round, so let's add more subdivisions to the cube so it still keeps some cubic shape. Damn, it keeps shifting to the different views, even though I kind of like this look. But no, let's make sure the render view stays with the main angle. Maybe we can test out different angles though. Mm, maybe bring the key light more to the side. Uh, nah, let's just stick to the 45 degree angle. Okay, let's change the HDRI to this very bright one because it's too dramatic now. I don't want the shadows to be so dark. Too bright though, so let's bring down the intensity. This looks fine. I want one side of the rock stand to be dark, so let's move the rim light more to the back yeah something like this is nice and let's bring back the key light in to cover more surface okay let's add some texture to the background i'll add a spotlight scale up the cone size something like this and I want to add a gobo texture to it. I'll be using Grayscale Gorillas, but you can find them everywhere online. Just add them to the texture slot of the area light. So yeah, this is a classic one. Something like this. Mm, bring the key light back in. And let's sculpt the stand a bit to add more irregularities to it. Just a bit, nothing crazy. I still want to keep a fairly cubical shape. I can probably increase the displacement strength. Maybe pull the crevices more inside by reducing the new range min. Maybe scaling up the texture will help too. Nah. Maybe a bit more shaping. Let's rotate the HDRI a bit. Hmm. Pull back the rim light more to the side. Maybe make the background albedo a bit darker to help separate the subject from the background. I can also try increasing the exposure in the render settings. It looks good. Yeah, from here it's just about really tiny, subtle changes that probably only I can notice. Bring the key light a bit more to the side. Try a slight different angle. I do like the camera coming not as much from the top. Now adjust the background light to get a nicer framing.
and bring this rim light more to the back. Do I even really like this rim light? I think I do. It adds a little more flair to it. Maybe I just need to make it less strong. Also, let's make the HDRI brighter. The shadows are still a bit too dark. Yeah, and I actually went back and tried to stand with a bit of a warmer feel. I thought maybe you can sit on a raw piece of wood that can fit the creamy colors and the wooden handle. I kind of like that the stand is coming from the side and not dead center. It adds a little imbalance to the composition, which I actually like. I tried adding another one, but nah, it felt too out of place. So I stuck to this. Okay, and very lastly, I baked out the UV map of the glass part, like I did with the lid and the body. And in Photoshop, I added this little digital display thing. You can also just make it in After Effects as an animated sequence that displays kind of changing information. Then in Cinema 4D, first I was wondering about this shape and the reflection of the glass. Uh, I thought it was a roughness channel issue, but I realized it was just a reflection of the cattle itself. Anyway, I added the image I just created in Photoshop and plugged it into the emission color and turned up the emission. And look at this little display. And while I was at it, I took the opportunity to darken the roughness noise a bit to make the glass more shiny. And that's it. Told y'all Redshift users, I wasn't gonna let you down. Even though I do gotta say, I'm extremely disappointed with Redshift's procedural capabilities. I'm not sure why it's lacking so much, but it's truly missing a lot of simple things that I take for granted coming from Octane. Like being able to create radial noises or having all the procedural effects Octane has. Hoping this would change, but until then, we're just gonna have to get creative with it. Anyway, hope that helped. I'm gonna keep making these more practical product-based videos because honestly, I also learn a lot from them. Check out this kettle on my Gumroad, prints and pins I made on my other Gumroad, and consider supporting on Patreon or membership because you know I couldn't have made these videos without the help of my stylish patrons and members you see on the screen right now. I love you. Have a great day. Peace.